Welcome to the first video on how to use the laser cutters. In this video, I'll be actually demonstrating what all you need to do to make sure that you're actually able to use the laser cutters. So right now, I'm pointing at the two breakers right now for both of the laser cutters. The left breaker corresponds to the left laser cutter and the right breaker corresponds to the right laser cutter. If we flip this left breaker right here, we now know that the left laser cutter is able to draw power. So in order to actually turn on the laser cutter, there's a switch right here that we need to flip. So we flip the switch right here. It's located right next to the power board. And then if we look at the laser screen, we'll see that it's starting to turn on, which is good. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're wanting to actually make sure that there's airflow that's going to come into the laser cutter. So if we actually look right here, we will see that the PSI is currently at zero. We don't want that, so we actually need to turn the airflow on. And so to do that, you, we should see this uh, this little valve here that we need to uh, flip perpendicularly. And so we'll do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and give this flip. And then if we look at the pressure gauge now, we should see that it's at 100 PSI, which is what we want. So that's one of the last things we need to do. But finally, we want to flip these two switches over here. These two switches control the uh, air ventilation throughout the entire room. So uh, whatever you're engraving or cutting, if it's toxic or emits to noxious fumes, it'll be carried out and away from you through these vents right over here. So you'll never actually uh, be able to, I guess, smell those toxic fumes. So if we flip those on, it'll make the room very loud but it'll make the room pretty safe. So finally, the last thing we're going to want to do is actually adjust the Z-axis. So we'll see here that the Z, uh, to adjust the Z-axis, we're going to want to scroll down over to where we hit Z, hit OK. When we hit OK, we're given a height that the Z-axis is currently at. Now the z-axis is actually uh, how high the laser is from the material or the bed right now. And so we can adjust this as we see fit. And what we're going to want to look for is we're going to want our material to be exactly two inches away from the laser right here. And to do so, what we're going to want to do is we're going to uh, look over to the left of the laser cutter and we should see this little instrument right here. If we pick up this instrument and we observe it, we should look closely and see that there's a fine little divot there. And we're going to make sure that that divot aligns with the corner of the laser. So right now it does not. So what we're going to want to do, if we saw a gap just kind of like that, we're going to want to close that tiny gap between the divot and the laser. So in order to do so, we'll go back over here and uh, if we hit up, the bed moves closer to the divot, but if we hit down, the bed moves lower away from the lens. So we can see if we look closely that the divot needs to be move closer. So, so you guys can actually see the divot getting closer. I'm going to uh, be holding this up button while I'll let you guys look at the actual divot. So you keep holding it till about that, uh, that space is about gone like this. And once you do that, you've now successfully adjusted the Z-axis, which will ensure uh, quality and precise cuts. So we can hit back and you're ready to laser cut. So uh, one last thing, uh, if you wanted the, the bed to move faster, you can control which significant figure you're working with. So if you're messing with this significant figure, if we move downwards, we'll see that the laser bed moves pretty quickly out and away from the uh, from uh, the instrument here. So that's just a little helpful to know in case the bed was very far away or needs to be very far away from the instrument. And then when you're done with that, you just want to take the instrument back and put it where you found it. You should see that there's a little flat slide here. The flat side should go down to where the flat side is facing the rail. And that's it. Thanks.